Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where I talk about the Godot game engine. Uh, firstly, a warm welcome to all Unity developers. Uh, what took you guys so long? Secondly, a shout out to Game Dev Journey, who has mentioned my channel a couple of times. Uh, I'm not just returning a favor, I am myself a subscriber of his channel and I really like the content selection and how it's presented. He has a lot of uh, Godot related stuff like uh, game jams, uh, tutorial channels, devlogs and so on. Overall, a very recommendable uh, channel, so do go check it out. Alright, back to my thing. I uh, really want to go back to making devlogs, which I will, but before I do, I think I owe you guys one more topic. Uh, just to close out on the subject of terrain, and that is navigation. Navigation is always tricky with large open world maps, especially when your terrain doesn't really exist outside of a vertex shader. Uh, how do you bake the nav mesh then? Or do you even bake it? Well, if you look at how games generally handle NPC movement in an open world uh, setting, you'll discover that in most cases NPCs are clustered within a certain area, like a village or a town, uh, even if you bump into some in a wilderness somewhere, they're usually locked to a stretch of uh, the game world, like a pit or a gorge or a meadow or some such, and they wouldn't chase you beyond it. Uh, usually this is because uh, their uh, nav mesh doesn't stretch beyond the area where they're supposed to be active, which makes total sense because to cover an entire game world with a nav mesh would be uh, horribly expensive. The other approach is to keep NPC movement within the perimeter of a certain structure or an enclosure, like a, like a building or a square, where you mostly have flat surfaces so it's easy and cheap and fast to bake nav meshes. And then the open terrain is just for exploration or fighting uh, other players if it's a multiplayer game and so on. Now in my game I will probably use a mixture of these approaches but to begin with let's try and get our enemy movement to work over a large patch of open terrain. Like if you wanted to be able to drop NPCs anywhere you want on the map. This is the subject today. We're going to uh, bake a nav mesh for an entire terrain chunk that is pretty huge. If you want to hear about a more precise technique that lets you create nav meshes for specific slices of your height map terrain, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll make a follow-up video on that. Now, my terrain uh, is really flat. The vertices are displaced via a vertex shader. So how do I bake a nav mesh if I don't really have a mesh? Well, I have a script that creates a collider from, a, from my height map image. I made a video on how to make one, by the way, if you're interested. It's here in the channel somewhere. So if I add this keyword at tool, at the top of that collision making script and reload the project, Godot will run the script in the editor and give me the collision mesh. So now, theoretically, I could try and bake my nav mesh from this collider. So in the navigation region node, I'm going to create a new navigation mesh resource and set it to bake from a static collider, like so. Then hit bake and nothing happens. And honestly, I don't really know why. It looks like it should work. So it's either a bug or I'm not understanding what a static collider is. Now, whichever is the case, we need a different way, apparently. If it doesn't want to bake from a collider, let's try and build a traditional mesh from our height map and use that to bake the nav mesh. Uh, we have at least a couple of tools in Godot that could build a, a mesh from a height map. I've tested the surface tool and the immediate mesh tool. Immediate mesh is easier to use and uh, generally creates meshes faster, so let's use that. By the way, this method should also work in Godot 3, only that the node is called Immediate Geometry uh, in Godot 3. It was renamed to Immediate Mesh in Godot 4. Just, uh, just a footnote. So, starting from an empty uh, mesh instance node, I'm going to attach this mesh generating script to it and, um, and let's see what's in here. Okay, first remember to put this uh, at tool keyword at the very top of the script. And uh, when we're done, we will reload the project and the script should run in the editor and build us a mesh. Let's declare a few variables like the noise image. This will store our height map. It's width and height. Uh, we will need somewhere to store the pixel data. So let's create this height data dictionary for that purpose. We'll need uh, the amplitude of our terrain. We'll need a few packed vector arrays to store our verts and UVs and normals. We'll need the immediate mesh itself, of course, uh, the mesh resource, 
and a container for it, which will be our mesh instance node. Uh, mesh res, which stands for uh, mesh resolution, is optional. Um, when you construct a mesh from a from a, a bitmap in Godot, Godot will build vertices from pixel data, which means that the LOD, the level of detail of your mesh, will be defined by the pixel resolution of the image that is used to generate it. So mesh res allows you to skip some pixels and effectively reduce the LOD of the mesh. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so let's create the mesh. Let's load up the height map, uh, get its width and height. And then we're going to loop through the X and Y uh, to feed our height data dictionary um, with uh, uh, pixel data. For each X and each Y, we're going to create a vector 2 from the pixel that sits in that X and Y position on the image. And we're going to grab its grayscale uh, value and multiply it by the amplitude. I'm grabbing it from the, uh, the red channel here, as you can see. But it doesn't really matter which one you use, uh, red, green or blue. They are all grayscale and they're all the same because it's a grayscale image. So here you can see that if uh, mesh resolution was set to 2, we would only take every other pixel on X and every other on Y. And we would be creating a mesh that was half as dense. Um, if we set mesh res to 3, we would be building triangles from every third pixel and so on. Okay, so now in order to generate the terrain mesh, we need to build uh, quads based on our pixels. So let's just scroll down and, and, and look at that. Um, in order to build a quad, we need two triangles, right? So for each of the two triangles that will build our quad, we will create three vertices based on the information that we can now pull from the height data uh, dictionary. And we will populate the vertices array with the uh, thus created vertices. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the math of this because you guys would fall asleep, but just trust me, it works. Then we build the UVs and push them uh, into the UVs array. And then we get the sides of the triangle from the three vertices and use the cross product of the sides uh, to work out the normal and then push the normal into the into into the normals array and we repeat that for the second triangle and we have all the information that's needed to build a quad so now what we need to do is tell the immediate mesh tool to generate a mesh uh, from these quads and to do that we have to call the uh, method surface begin on our immediate mesh uh, set the uh, mesh type to primitive triangles and then we say, for each item in the array of vertices, which is the array that stores vector 3s, which we created before uh, using the height data, create an actual vertex. Give it a UV from the UVs array and give it a normal from the normals array. And then we call surface end to complete the process. And finally, we set the uh, newly created mesh as the mesh resource inside of our mesh instance node. That is our container. And that's it. So uh, let's uh, reload the project and boom, we have a nice looking terrain mesh. So now what we can do is we can bake a nav mesh from this mesh. We'll set the, the nav mesh to bake from mesh instances as opposed to static colliders. Hit bake and nothing. Again, it baffles me as to why it's not baking. Uh, thankfully, uh, we, we can use a trick to uh, get Godot to do what we want it to do. The trick is, um, select the newly generated mesh instance, go to the mesh pull-down menu right here, and here's a nice little thing called uh, create outline mesh. Basically what it does is it creates a copy of the mesh where the vertices are offset along the surface normals. And, and you can control the, uh, the offset with this outline size setting. So if you set it to zero and hit create, it looks like nothing's happened, but in fact, you've just created a copy of your mesh that is basically just identical. And uh, this one, somehow, Godot understands. So now if you go back to the nav mesh and hit bake nav mesh again, it's going to take a moment, but it will bake a very attractive looking navigation mesh. You can of course play around with the settings here if you wanted to bake a, a simpler navigation mesh, for example. Uh, one other thing you could do if you wanted to, say, bake the nav mesh only for a portion of your terrain, is you could generate the mesh for a specific region of the height map image only. And it's easy enough to do. I mean, instead of looping through the full width and height of the image to create vertices, just loop through a specific range of the pixels on each axis. For example, let's say I want to build a mesh 
uh, for a square in the middle of my map that is 100 by 100 in size. Uh, to define the square, I need to determine the first uh, and the last pixel on each axis. Now my entire height map image is 1000 by 1000, so to get the square in the middle, the range should be from 450 to 550 on both axes. And then in the script, just use that range to loop through. And boom, I have a small patch of mesh, which I can now use to bake a partial uh, nav mesh. There are of course um, other ways to obtain partial meshes from a height map image, which are way more accurate and allow you to define the shape of the perimeter. I can think of at least two, so let me know if, in the comments if you would like to hear about them. Otherwise, uh, this really is it. It's a perfectly usable nav mesh. You can of course put some obstacles in your world, just make sure they are children of the navigation region node, or placed in a specific group, and then rebake the mesh, and it will bake itself around those obstacles. And that's it for today, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a like if you did, subscribe for more content, follow me on Twitter for more regular updates, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!